Hello and welcome to OSS Health Spinal Education Program. The purpose of this class is to provide you with a comprehensive look into why spine surgery was recommended by your surgeon, as well as the tools necessary to prepare for a positive outcome. There's three different areas of spine surgery. There's cervical spine, thoracic spine, and lumbar spine. The diagnoses that may lead to you having surgery are stenosis, disc herniation, instability, scoliosis, infection, or tumor. The first of these diagnoses is stenosis, or narrowing. Osteophytes, which is bone, and ligaments, or soft tissue, get larger and decrease the space available for the nerve roots to pass through. This can put pressure on the nerves and cause arm and or leg pain. These are different types of instrumentation that your surgeon will choose to use depending on the type of surgery you require. Disc herniation, intervertebral discs have a softer center surrounded by a thick outer ring of tissue. A hole can form in the outer ring allowing some of the softer material inside to extrude or herniate. This can put pressure on the nerves and cause pain. Spondylolisthesis or instability of the intervertebral disc and or the posterior facet joints leads to slippage of one vertebral body in relation to another. If severe enough, this can compress the nerves and cause back and or leg pain. Scoliosis, curvature of the spine, can be due to developmental or degenerative causes. When treatment is unsuccessful with a brace, surgical fusion of the spine is often recommended. Complications with spinal surgery. Pain at the bone graft site, Failure of the fusion process or breakage of metal implants. This can be caused by severe trauma. Deep venous blood clots that may also lead to pulmonary embolism. Nerve injury, graft rejection, or infection. Preparing for surgery. Medications to stop taking prior to surgery. Two weeks prior to surgery, all herbal supplements such as fish oil, glucosamine, and all NSAIDs, non-steroidal medication, should be stopped. These could cause excessive bleeding or ineffective anesthesia results. One week prior to surgery, stop all blood thinners, therapy based on recommendations made by your physician. Ask your doctor if you are taking hormones or birth control medications. If you are taking any immunosuppressant medications, you may need to stop taking them 14 days prior to surgery with the approval of your rheumatologist. Medicated patches. If you are currently using a prescription patch for any reason such as pain management, control of blood pressure, or estrogen replacement, please bring a copy of the prescription with you the day of surgery. If you do not bring a copy of the prescription with you the day of surgery, we are unable to verify the medication on the patch and will need to remove it and replace it with one of our own to ensure your safety. Obtain all required pre-admission testing, such as blood tests, EKGs, urine samples, or chest x-rays. A physician may require a preoperative physical to be passed, bring a list of current medications with dosages and recommendations, a list of physicians you see regularly, a list of allergies, and a list of medical and surgical history. Preoperative assessment. It is important for the medical physician to consider the medications you are currently taking and to make re recommendations for continuing or discontinuing those medications during the surgical period. The medical physician will consider your past medical history, including respiratory and cardiac issues. This medical history will determine if further testing may be necessary prior to your surgery. Preoperative assessment or medical clearance. Your surgeon may request that you have a preoperative evaluation by a medical provider or cardiologist prior to your surgery to assess your medical issues and determine how to best manage these issues during and after your surgery. Your medical physician and the surgeon will be working together to ensure you have the best care during and after the surgical process. 
surgical site infection prevention. All patients having elective surgical procedures at OSS Orthopedic Hospital will be screened for Staph aureus or MRSA MSSA infection during the pre-admission testing process. Surgical site infection prevention. All patients who are found to be an MSSA or MRSA carrier will receive the following. A phone call notifying you of your positive result. A prescription will be faxed to your pharmacy for Mepuricin or Bactroban to apply to both nostrils and under the fingernails for five days prior to surgery. You will be instructed to refer to the form titled Preoperative Preparation Form for the MRSA MSSA colonized patients. This form must be completed and brought with you the morning of surgery. Other important factors. Nutrition. Please eat balanced meals to maintain or lose weight. Start taking a multivitamin daily. Continue to monitor blood sugar if you are a diabetic. Physical therapy. Practice exercising regularly to increase muscle strength. Stop smoking. This can affect anesthesia risks, postoperative respiratory complications, wound and bone healing delays, increased risk of blood clots. Preparing for your hospital stay. Items to bring. We're asking you to bring rubber sole shoes or closed back slippers. Um, we want you to be able to have support when you're walking, no high heels, um, no sandals, anything like that. As far as your dentures, hearing aids, or glasses, um, we need containers for them. You can bring them. We do have some here if you forget them. For your therapy, we recommend loose-fitting clothes. We do provide shorts and a t-shirt for you, which you can wear for your therapy, and you can take that home with you. One of the most important things is to include all your current medications, including the doses and the times they're to be taken. It says on this slide here not to bring your actual medications, but there will be exceptions to that. Sometimes our hospital does not have the medication you're on, and they will ask you to bring that medication in, but bring it in in the bottle, not just the pills. You need insurance cards, picture identification. Also, if you have a copy of your living will, durable power of attorney or organ donor, um, bring that with you and I've been asked to just give a little plug for uh, living will it's very important that each one of us have one it's important because it relieves your family the responsibility during moments of crisis to decide what you want at this time so we really push that you do get a living will you do get a durable power of attorney however since you're having surgery the living will is not in effect at some times here at the hospital because of the medications we give you. You also are given a spine um, surgery folder and packet. You're to bring that with you when you come. And then any braces or cervical collars that you have, bring them with you. Most of our surgeons do not use them, but at least if you have them there, we can evaluate them. Items to leave behind. Um, as I said before, leave your personal medications unless we specifically ask you to bring them in. As far as the walker, um, you don't need canes or wheelchairs here, but if you do have your own walker, you may want to bring that in because um, at times we do need a walker with back surgery. Next surgery, we don't. As far as cash, credit cards, valuables, and jewelry, we recommend you leave that at home. There's nothing really to buy here at the hospital. The day before surgery, you're going to use your antibacterial soap or wipes. As directed, after midnight, do not eat anything including candy or chewing gum, and then follow your um, physician's instructions as far as drinking fluids. You will be called the day before by the hospital let you know the time of your surgery the next day. Day of surgery. Morning of surgery, again, nothing to eat or drink unless your physician says so. Sometimes they tell you you can take a pill with a sip of water, and that depends on specific instructions given to you. The actual time you'll be in surgery is about one to three hours. Time in recovery room is one to three hours. And during your surgery and recovery room time, your family will be waiting in the, oh, in the waiting room. <laughs> you will be given a pager like they do at the restaurants. And when um, your family member is um, finished, the doctor's ready to talk to you, then that pager will go off. Here's our hospital. Um, I know some of you may be going to Memorial and York Hospital. This is the OSS Orthopedic Hospital. 
on arrival at the facility. You'll need someone to drive you here and to stay with you for um, the next 24 hours if you're going home after surgery. If when you come, come into the main entrance, the OSS hospital, you go, the reception is right on your left. Just go there and talk to them. They will direct you the rest of the way. As far as um, the ambulatory center, then you go into the main orthopedic clinic and proceed to the um, front desk. Again, they'll direct you. Memorial Hospital, you go into the hospital, go up to the second floor. York Hospital, for the short stay, you take the south elevators to the second floor, and there's directions there. This is how our reception desk looks. Once you register, they'll take you to the pre-op area. The hospital staff will check you in. Of course, you'll have to sign some papers. You'll be asked to change into a hospital gown, and then one of the staff, one of the nurses will start the IV. At this time, you'll be met by the anesthesiologist and or the surgeon and the nurses for additional questions. The surgeon will then initial your back, neck, wherever your surgical site is so they know the exact location. You'll be brought to the operating room on a gurney. Your identification will be checked. While you're in the hospital, you'll be asked your name and your birth date frequently. In fact, on discharge, people look at me I tell them this is the last time probably. So it will be asked of you frequently. You will be positioned on the operating table. The anesthesiologist will begin with the medications and then you don't remember anything after that. The anesthesia you'll receive, some receive general, some will be more of a twilight sleep. You may hear some sounds around, um, around you. After surgery, you will wake up in the PACU, post-anesthesia care unit. There will be different nurses here than the ones that greeted you when you came in before surgery. At this time, they will start to assess and treat your pain and care for you as you recover from the anesthesia. This expected time in the recovery room is usually one to three hours. Those of you that have had surgery, you may sleep, know that you may sleep through most of this time. You may just wake up and the next thing you know, you're going up on the floor, but it has been one to three hours. Once you um, are stable and the nursing staff decides that you can have a visitor. You may have one to two visitors in the recovery room. This is at the discretion of the um, post-op nurses. Sometimes you're very comfortable, you're resting, and they just want you to stay that way. Um, so it may or may not be available for you. This is the how the PACU looks, the, what you're looking at in the screen in the front, that's where you will be. Beyond the curtains is pre-op where you are before surgery. Pain management is one of our most important aspects of your post-op care, and it's something we start working with you during surgery in PACU and when you come on the hospital floor. We ask that you request pain medication when you begin to feel the pain increase. Don't wait until the pain is so bad that you can't handle it. And then be sure you ask for pain medication at least 30 minutes before your therapy begins. And our physical therapy department is very good about coming in and if you're in pain, they will wait for your therapy till you've had pain medicine. So pain medicine begins in recovery room and the options that we have are um, PCA pumps, which are a pump that you control. You have a little button you push. When your pain starts to increase, you just push the button and it'll give you a controlled dose of medication. Please tell your family members not to push the button for you. Um, if there'll be times that you're um, complaining of pain, but you don't, you're dozing on and off and you really don't remember that. And if the family pushes the button at that point, um, it could put you into more of a sleep than we want you to be. The other medications we can give are injections. They are, they are always by, through the IV tubing. I've never seen an injection that we give directly to you unless it's like the Lovenox or the, um, you know, your insulin. But all of our pain medications are IV. And then we do give a lot of oral medications. When you come up to the floor, you will have an oxygen and we usually keep the oxygen on until you're at least the first night and then as long as you have the pump that you push with your finger, the PCA pump. You'll have an IV for fluids. You also have what we call sequential compression devices. These are pumps on your legs that inflate and decrease one at a time and they're to prevent blood clots. 
You, we will have a pulse ox on your finger. It's a little piece of plastic that reads off your oxygen levels. We also have lots of blankets to keep you warm. And if you're not warm, ask. We have a warmer and they're wonderful. So depending on your physician, you may have a urinary catheter in your bladder. And um, this will be usually be in overnight, then we'll take it out in the morning. You also may have a drain that will keep, away, keep fluids away from your spine. As far as the neck or back brace, that is very specific with the surgeons. And with everybody, we do give you ice packs, which we um, have another set frozen for you. So as soon as they start warming up, um, request that you get new ice packs. In the recovery room, you'll be encouraged to cough and deep breathe. Frequently, this helps move the fluid around in your lungs and prevents um, pneumonia. The nursing staff will continually assess your pain, and we use a pain scale from zero to 10 zero being no pain and 10 being the worst pain. And they may also ask you, how do you feel, what level do you feel that your pain is controlled? So if you feel at a five that you can control your pain, that you can do your exercises, um, they may ask you that. And we ask you that constantly through your hospital stay. We will give you your pain medicine, we'll come back and evaluate where is your pain now on a scale of zero to 10. The day of surgery, when you're on the floor, you will be given a diet. What we do with our, um, to provide food for you, we have menus. You look through the menu, decide what you want, there's a number to call. They'll bring your food up to you. We recommend you start off with something light. One of our nurses is always saying chicken noodle soup, which is pretty good here. So we recommend you start with something light like that and then advance your diet. Um, a therapist or nursing staff will work with you if you come up before uh, three or four in the afternoon, the physical therapist will probably get you up that first day and walk with you. If not, the nurses will get you up that night to walk. A case manager, and that's me or my coworker, Loretta, we will come into the room probably sometime that evening just to discuss with you about your discharge the next morning. Blood will probably not be drawn for labs. We don't do a lot of blood work. And with most of our spine patients, like I said, usually go home the next day, but we will come in and evaluate you in the morning and see how you're doing. This is what our hospital rooms look like. What you can see, we have big screen TVs over to the side there. The green chair is where it um, opens up into a bed, and if you have a family member that wants to stay overnight, they can stay overnight. Like we said, you order your food through a menu. Your family members are also capable of buying a voucher and being able to um, order the food, and then the food will be brought to the room. Next, we're gonna discuss um, preventing complications. The first one is constipation. When you have surgery, we put your bowel to sleep, and then um, you're eating less, you're not as active, and most of our pain medicines cause constipation. So it's a real concern of ours that you um, keep, your, keep this under control. We give you stool softeners twice a day while you're here and we send you home with a recommendation for that. With your back surgery, we have a concern about putting pressure on the surgical sites with straining. So we ask that you take laxatives as needed and increase your fluid intake. As far as nausea, we mentioned before, um, start with a um, soft diet and advance as tolerated. We do have medications that we can give you IV that will prevent nausea or help your nausea if you get it. As far as your swelling, we use ice packs and while you're in the hospital, we have them on continuously. The equipment that's frequently used with um, cervical spine surgeries, occasionally a physician will use a neck brace. Again, it's very specific to certain surgeons. As far as your back brace, a lot of surgeons don't use them. We have a couple that do, and we will order both of those for you when you're on the floor. Walker and crutches are sometimes used. We go by the recommendation of the therapist and the physical therapist, and they will tell us if you need it, we can order it for you then, or if you have one, you can bring it in. Other complications, pneumonia, you'll have an incentive spirometer given you in the hospital. That's a little plastic um, object that you will take a, a blow out and then take a deep breath in and move the um, dial up and down. We ask you to do that about 10 times 
an hour. And if you have a family member, it might be good to assign that to them to remind you to do that. Also, coughing and deep breathing and then getting you up early with mobilization helps with the pneumonia. As far as infection, we usually leave the dressings on until discharge. Sometimes we change them, sometimes we don't. We give you IV antibiotics 24 hours after surgery, which has been shown in research to be the best way to prevent any infection. And hand washing, that should be done constantly. And, and you can even encourage your family to wash their hands. And then the other complication is blood clots, which we um, ask, we do early mobilization for. Most of our patients do not wear TED stockings. Those are the white hose. But um, we do put the uh, CDs on everybody. Those are the pumps for your legs. And every time you're in bed, they should be on. We do not usually use blood thinners because of discharge planning. Like we said, there. Usually it's overnight, but we will come in the morning and evaluate you on rounds with the physician, the case manager, which will assist you with any discharge plans you may have. When we come with, talk to you the night before, if there's any concerns you have about the next day, please let us know then and we can work with you on that. So the criteria for discharge is the following, that you're able to walk and pass PT that you can keep fluids down and that you're urinating okay. Post-op care, as far as your wound care, we'll give you instructions on your discharge instructions on how to handle your wound. You need to um, look at it every day, even if you do not remove the drainage, watch for signs of infection, which would be redness, swelling, increasing pain, pus drainage, temperature, things like that. And the soft tissues can take six weeks to heal, so avoid any sharp movements. Post-operatively, um, no lifting, avoid reaching, with, especially with your neck. You will be in a neck brace, either a soft collar or hard, hard collar, no moving your head up or down, sideways, just keep it um, looking forward. Walking is permitted, there's no restrictions on walking, but other activities such as biking, swimming, um, wait for the two-week follow-up physician appointment and he will readjust your restrictions. Bathing, again, we'll go over that with you, whether or not you can get your dressing wet. We encourage good nutrition to heal your bones and soft tissue. So that would include meat, fish, eggs, chicken, and then um, multivitamin may or may not be ordered. Smoking is a big risk with post-op care. With the smoking, it constricts your blood vessels, therefore it interferes with healing. We can give you information on how to stop smoking. One of our recommendations is to cut back as much as possible. As far as the brace, again, you may or may not be prescribed one and use it as directed. No driving, again, you'll have a follow-up appointment in two weeks, and at that time you can discuss it with your physician. We will give you a, a medication list of medications to take and those are the medications your physician's ordering. A lot of times we do not want you to take anti-inflammatories because they can cause um, bleeding. As far as metal detectors, most of the um, surgery is, the in instrumentation is done with titanium. It won't affect it. And you can discuss that with your surgeon on your follow-up visit. Um, with fatigue, don't underestimate how tired you will get after surgery even in a few months post your surgery date. If you're wondering why you're so tired, just remember you just had major surgery a few weeks ago, a month ago or so, and take it easy. As far as sitting, if you've had back surgery, usually 15 to 20 minutes, or here it says 20 to 30 minutes, is probably the limit for sitting. So we encourage you to change your position frequently, sitting, standing, and walking. As we mentioned before, recreational activity should be avoided until you have your follow-up visit. With neck surgery, you will have some soreness to your neck, of course. You may have some hoarseness. And they recommend using vending straws at first to help with drinking liquids and then take a soft eye and advance it as you can. The other concern we have, of course, is infection. And you need to look around your incision if you don't Change the dressing, at least look around the dressing. Look for signs of infection, which would be redness, swelling, 
increasing pain or pus drainage, any change in the color, amount, odor of the drainage. If you get a fever greater than 100.5, any chills or anything like that, please call your surgeon right away. Okay, the last um, complication we're going to talk about is blood clots or pulmonary embolus. What you're looking for is a swelling in your leg. It can be anywhere in your leg. Usually it's in the calf. It's, swellingness, it's swelling that um, is tender, red, swollen, painful, or it can just be purplish color skin if you have any hard areas along veins. Please call your surgeon right away. If, however, you get chest pain, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, sweating, confusion, anything like that, it may mean that you have a blood clot in your lungs. Please call 911 immediately and then tell them that you had surgery recently. If physical therapy is indicated, it may begin the day of surgery or the day after surgery, depending on your arrival to the nursing floor. If you have been admitted, the nursing assistants and nurses will begin the day by getting you up and out of bed and ready to start therapy. Therapists will evaluate and develop a treatment plan for your activities of daily living, instruction on transfer, self-care, and use of adaptive equipment. Physical therapy will instruct you on the proper use of a walker if needed, climbing stairs, and strengthening exercises. There may be therapy on your day of discharge, Make modifications to your home prior to surgery that will decrease your risk for falls or injury. Before coming to our hospital, um, you want to make sure that you're moving electrical and phone cords away from your walkways. You want to make sure that you have chairs that have armrests and avoid any low chairs or sofas. Please remove any throw rugs that may cause injury. For your stairways, you want to replace worn stair treads, install stable handrails on both sides of the stairs, and you want to make sure that your stairs and hallways are brightly lit. In your bathroom, you may wish to install grab bars in the bathtub, install skid resistant strips or rubber mats in the bathtub, and you may want to have a raised toilet seat or a tub transfer bench on hand. In your bedroom, you want to make sure that you have a lamp and a phone within reach. You want to keep a clear path from your bedroom to the bathroom and you always want to sit while getting dressed. In your kitchen, you want to store frequently used items at waste level and less frequently used items in the higher cabinets. It may also be helpful to prepare and freeze meals prior to your admission to the hospital. Please review the information in the folder you were given. You will find answers to many of your questions inside. Please don't be afraid to ask questions. We are here to help you through your surgery and recovery. Please contact your surgeon's office for further questions. Thank you for participating in our spine education.